In this module, we're going to talk about analysis of variants, or typically shortened to ANOVA. And the last thing that you did was actually test between two different means. Well, what if you wanted to test more than two means? And that's what we use ANOVA for. And so this analysis of variance is when we want to analyze the variability. In other words, is there a big spread between uh, the different means of more than two populations? And a lot of times these are called treatments. Or we're looking to see is, is a lot of the variability due to the differences in the means but or actually within the means. And so if we want to find out the differences in sample means to see if they're consistent of what we would expect or simply do chance to differences from one sample to another. So you might think of me teaching a bunch of different classes are pretty much all the averages, the means the same, okay? Or is there a lot of variability within one class, a lot of spread, a lot of people failing, a lot of people passing, or most people just pretty much clumped together. And so this is what ANOVA is used for, is definitely to look to see if those differences are significant. So you can look here with a box plot if I have uh, three different samples here. And so let's, again, let's just go with the classrooms. So it looks like this class is pretty much on the lower end, but they're pretty much clumped together where this is in the middle, sample two, and then sample mean three seems to be a larger group. This might be like an honors class. But the, the difference to notice here is that by looking at their means, it certainly looks like there is a difference between these classes. The second example, and so that's what it's asking here, what do you think about these actual means? And it does look like there is a difference. The, the second example is the means may look, you know, like there still is a difference, but notice here the data is more spread out. There's a lot more variability. And so not really sure what's going on here even though the sample means are still different, but with all this variability, we might want to look and see what are the differences between these three means. All right, we have conditions as we do for every test that each of the populations uh, must be come from a normal distribution, right? And so we're kind of used to that. The standard, the variances or standard deviations should all be equal, okay? We know they're not going to be exactly equal, but we shouldn't have a huge spread like that last example. And the observations are independent, okay? So they're independent of one another. And certainly when comparing the population means that the actual samples are selected independent of each other. And so here it says, in practice, the test based on these assumptions works well as long as the conditions are not too badly violated. As we know, we're not going to have exact variances, exact means, but it's very easy to look at box plots to see that pretty much they're all together. Uh, there's not a huge spread of, you know, one group versus another. And so this is what we use our formal procedure for an, our ANOVA to test equal standard deviation. It can be quite sensitive to even small violations of the normality condition. So, you know, we need to make sure that our data is coming from a normal distribution. And this, once the equal standard deviation conditions are reasonably met, then if the largest of the sample standard deviation is at most twice the smallest one, then we're okay with these conditions. All right, now there's going to be a lot of formulas, a lot of different um, terminology here that you're going to have to get down. Definitely some of these you might want to put on a formula sheet, okay, so to actually get the, figure out what each one of these I, J, C, all these mean. Um, unfortunately, if you're not using our exact textbook, different textbook, even Excel calls these different things, but I, I think you'll get them down by what they mean. We're looking at the variation 
from different sources. One of the variation would be among the different groups, the different classes. Okay, that would be a variation. I'm going to go with the black textbook, so the SSC, some of the squares of the columns. So in other words, each column might be a classroom. And so I'm looking to see between each column, is there a lot of variation going on? A lot of times this is called some of the squares of among, which you will actually see that's what it shows in Excel, or the sum of squares between each one of these. Within the group, some of the squares of the error, or some of the squares within. Okay, and Excel actually calls this error. And then the total sum of the squares is just totaling these. So you can see what's going on in the sum of the squares among the different groups is we're looking at going through each group. So notice J is the group level and then going through each group. Within each group, the X sub J is the mean of the individual group minus the grand mean, the mean of all the groups. And then of course the N sub J, N we're used to being the sample size, right? are the number of observations in each group. The only difference down here now is not only are we going through each group, each column, we're getting inside of them, and that's where the within comes from. Okay, so we're looking at each individual value, the x sub i sub j, and then minus the mean of its particular group, and going through each group, and then each individual value within the group. And then once again, adding those two together to get the sum of the squares of the total. Uh, typically, you put your results in a table. You'll see from my example, Excel does this so nicely for you. But where are all these numbers coming from? This is what you just saw on the last slide. So these are those same formulas. The degrees of freedom for the among, so that's the number of groups, minus one the degrees of freedom within, so notice that's our actual sample size, um, our total number of values minus our number of groups, and then our total number of values minus one. Okay, so each for our degrees of freedom. Typically, as you're gonna see if you do this manually, that the among is called the numerator and the within the denominator. I'll show you that next. So then manually, these computations have to be made once you find the sum of the squares of the columns, okay, among, and then divided by the degrees of freedom. Same thing for the sum of the squares of the error. So we get the mean square of the columns, the mean squared of the errors. And then those two values are divided to give us our F test statistic. This is no different than when we were doing hypothesis test and we'd get a Z test statistic or a T and then we'd go look up in the table. Well, guess what? There's an F table. So you would actually go look this up in the F table. As I mentioned, the among the columns, the number of groups is <clears throat> minus one would be the degrees of freedom of the numerator. And so you'll see that these written here, denominator and numerator, be careful if you choose to do this manually that you pick the correct F table based on your alpha. And just as we do with hypothesis testing, what do you do? You check to see, did you fall in the critical region? So you, you mark your critical region, okay, based off of whatever your alpha value is. And then you get your F statistic, once again, based off of here. So I get my F statistic and I see, does it actually fall in the critical region? If it is, then I will reject. If not, then, and, and if I reject, I'm just saying that at least one of the means are different. I'm not saying they're all different. I'm saying at least one of them is different. If I don't fall in the critical region, then I assume they're all the same. So as always, the best way to learn this is an example. So after you get through all the terminology, Go straight to my example that I have posted next.